classification of newborns. Now, multiple ways you can classify the newborn. First way of classifying is based upon the gestational age of the child. So, based upon the gestational age of the mother, when the baby is born, you can classify the baby as preterm, term, and postterm. So, what first is based upon gestational age. Preterm baby will be born less than 37 weeks. Term baby will be born between 37 to less than 42 weeks. And postterm baby will be born at or beyond 42 weeks. This is the first classification. Second classification is based upon birth weight. Normal birth weight in a newborn, I just told you, 2.5 to 3.99 kg, irrespective of gestational age. If the baby is born, and the weight of the child, the birth weight of the child is below 2.5 kg, we call it as low birth weight. If it is below 1.5 kg, that is very low birth weight. If it is below 1 kg, that is below 1000 grams, 700 gram, 800 gram, 900 gram, 950 gram, that these all babies will be called as extremely low birth weight newborn. And finally, we have macrosomia. Macrosomia will be weight 4 kgs and above. Now, need PG MCQ 2019. Most important risk factor for macrosomia to occur in a child, the most important risk factor is uncontrolled maternal diabetes. So, whenever mother has uncontrolled diabetes, that will cause hyperglycemia, that will stimulate more insulin release in the fetus. Insulin will cause fat deposition leading to a big baby. So, heavy baby, macrosomic baby will be produced in such patients. And the third way of classifying, you take the birth fit, you take the gestational age, both of them, and then plot on a chart. There are two types of charts available. Both look very similar. Lubchenko's chart and Fenton's chart. They are available for each country. And uh, separate charts are available for male and female baby. And uh, let us have a look at how these charts look like. So, this is how this Lubchenko's chart looks like. The chart will have on the x-axis gestational age, on the y-axis weight of the child in grams. And then you have these percentile curves which are shown. The topmost curve is 90th centile. The bottommost curve is 10th centile. So, when a child is born, you take birth weight, whatever is the gestational age and plot on this chart. If the child is lying between 10th to 90th centile, you will say the child is appropriate for gestational age. If the child is below this 10th centile, you will say the child is small for gestational age. And if the child is above 90th centile, you will call the baby as large for gestational age. This is a cumbersome method, but it gives you more information and is used better for risk assessment in a child after birth because it takes both birth weight and gestational age into consideration. Examiner can ask you the definition. Examiner can give you an image-based question. See, even if it is a quick revision program, you need to understand that whatever topic you are reading, what way this can be asked in the exam? You have to do the question, uh, previous year questions and uh, MCQ practice. But always try to, you know, take some pause in every topic and try to see what examiner can ask in it. Here, examiner can ask the definition or examiner can give you a case scenario. They will put up an image and they will say child was born. They will plot on the chart or they will ask you to plot on the chart and tell the diagnosis. So, one, when you plot, if it is between 10th to 90th centile, appropriate for gestational age. Above 90th centile, large for gestational age and below centile small for gestational age. This is what the definition also is. AG is between 10 to 90 centile, SGA is below 10 centile and large for gestational age is above 90 centile. So, what is IUGR? Often, IUGR and SGA are synonymously used but they are not the same. IUGR is said to be there. There are two types of definition. If the SGA patient, small for gestational age patient is having Ultrasound evidence of intrauterine growth restriction. There is a prenatal ultrasound available where parameters like uh, femur length and various you know estimated fetal weight and the, all those things which you read in obs gynae, they were indicating some degree of IUGR in utero. And now the child is born, he's SGA, you will call it as IUGR. Second way will be, suppose past records are not available. By looking at the child, how you will say, if there is any SGA child with visible wasting postnatally, when the child looks to be visibly wasted, for example, the child is having loose skin folds. You will say IOGR is present. So, what is the meaning of this? What I have written? Listen to me again. What is IOGR? Two types of definition. IOGR will be SGA baby with any ultrasound evidence prenatally of growth restriction. That is one definition. Second definition, SGA baby who is also having on examination visible wasting. How would you say visible wasting? Look for clinical features like loose skin folds. 
very similar to marasmus. It's a newborn, so we'll not use the word marasmus, but loose skin folds present on the body. Again, it will be called as IUG. Okay. Now, what is pondral index? Pondral index is an index that we calculate often in IUGR and SGA babies. Pondral index, there is a formula for that. It is given by the formula weight in grams divided by cube of length in centimeters multiplied by 100. So, pondral index formula is weight in grams divided by cube of length in centimeter multiplied by 100. So, whenever you calculate pondral index, there are two possibilities. Either the pondral index is less than 2 or it is equal to or more than 2. If the pondral index is less than 2, these babies are called as asymmetrical SGA, also called as asymmetrical IUGR. And if it is equal to or more than 2, these babies are called as symmetrical IUGR. These asymmetrical babies look to be very, you know, uh, unique. They look to be very abnormal. When these babies will be born, so they will have a relatively large looking head. It is actually normal, but it is a relatively large looking, looking head and the remaining body will be very small. So these babies will look like alien babies. So many times relatives are not very happy seeing such a kid. They will be like, oh, you have a son being born. Congratulations. Then, then they will be doing that gossiping. Isn't the baby looking like, you know, very abnormal? Uh -huh, so abnormal. Don't fall prey to these relatives. Say to yourself, yes, IUGR my baby has, but this is a good outcome. These babies are going to have a good prognosis. What is asymmetrical IUGR? Try to understand. Suppose there was a fetus and there was a maternal problem. Problem was not in the fetus, problem was in the mother. Placental abnormality, pregnancy induced hypertension, any, you know, blood supply to the fetus was compromised. So, fetus will try to fight back. How fetus will fight back? If there is any interruption of fetal blood supply in utero, fetus will do a redistribution of the blood flow. Blood flow will be maintained to the head and neck and the remaining part of the body, there will be vasoconstriction. So, what will happen? The head and neck, the brain will develop normally. So, head circumference will be normal for the age. But the remaining body will be shrunken. So, this will look to be an asymmetrical child. Don't worry. Postnatally, child will have a relatively better outcome. Why? Because catch-up growth will be possible in the remaining body. Brain is the most important organ. And so, intellectual dysfunction will not occur in this child. Right? Anything, any person, any student, any fetus, any organism who adapts will have a better outcome. Asymmetrical IUGR occurs due to adaptation in utero. On the other hand, symmetrical IUGR occurs in fetal diseases. For example, congenital infection. For example, trisomies. So, what will happen? Fetus will not be able to, any insult in utero, fetus will not be able to do redistribution of the blood flow. So, the brain will be affected. Brain will be small, head is small. Remaining body is shrunken, remaining body is small. Both are symmetrical with respect to each other, but they will have a relatively poor outcome and intellectual dysfunction will be more common. Right? So, what are the key points you should know? Asymmetrical IUGR. They have a normal sized head. but they have a small shrunken body. Symmetrical IUGR will have a small sized head and they will have a small body. Asymmetrical IUGR usually occurs due to maternal factors. Symmetrical IUGR usually occurs due to fetal factors. Asymmetrical IUGR, CNS is spared. Symmetrical IUGR, CNS is involved. Asymmetrical IUGR, because CNS is spared, so they will have a good prognosis. That is good outcome. Whereas symmetrical IUGR will have a poor prognosis. So, this is the function, this is the importance of pondral index and it is helps you in risk stratification and planning the future course of action in the baby.